All right, to begin with the podcast going forward, uh, Amos, because uh, Black Diamond Authority is something new and wants to be integrated into so much, where did the idea come from? Gotcha. So the idea came from me being just a raw artist where I didn't know where to find where I was going to be compensated for the supplies that I'm buying, the, the support that I needed to know if my art was even worth anything, and then also get that reassurance from other individuals that's not families or friends that don't want to hurt my feelings to know what I'm doing is worth attention. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I thought about it all, I kind of broke down to how could I establish something where those metrics can be kind of measured in a realistic way, but not like boring number statistics way. It's more of a, you know, I could see my art selling because I do this, but if I do this instead, people really not feeling it. And going that way, the whole trial and error, even though it's time consuming, it helps you figure out what kind of artist you can be or what you want to be. And with that, that kind of helped me formulate Black Diamond Authority. And as I kind of got into one thing, I figured I kind of want to try this out. And it started to slowly grow into, man, I kind of want to see what this will look like. And then I had artists reaching out, seeing if they could join. Okay. And then at that point, I was like, do I want employees or do I want a team where we're all talented in our separate rights, but together we're like an unbeatable army. And that's mm-hmm. kind of the, the feeling that I want. I want everyone to be cold at what they do so they don't have to piggyback off of the same thing. I don't want 40 digital artists. I want people who could do a little bit of everything. And that's kind of what the business is about. So how important to you is it that representation really makes up um, the bulk of your company? Is it so big for you that that's how it's um, organically built? Or is it something that you think just should come over time? Or is it important to you at all? Um, It's important. I would say diversity first. Because when I applied for art roles, I was always... The black token there, having to kind of stay in a certain mold. I couldn't really express myself too much. And it was just feeling like I might as well work at uh, a a fast food or a retail or something else instead of doing my passion. So diversity is always first because I want diversity in talent, but I also want diversity in who we're bringing in. I don't want, you know, just, just... one zip code or one following or one belief all being a part of a company because that's a little stale. I kind of want to learn from my my teammates, my employees, coworkers. I feel like everything should be a learning experience. Right. Very good. Uh, so that being said, what is your five-year plan going forward? Uh, five years is definitely a lot of time to kind of break into a lot of <clears throat> things I kind of have on the list, like the clothing line is going to be like my main child for the time being for this year because it takes a lot to get a good one up and then it takes just as long to show up and promote it, expose it, and kind of get a good following. So for sure, year one is definitely clothing line, keeping this podcast active so people can have a good way to know what's going on behind the scenes with us. And then we do have a few events that we kind of want to create as well so within those kind of five years i kind of want to see those main three things kind of be what we're known for gotcha so with things like the clothing line in general or like collaborations important for you because i know like kid shogun you know you have a clothing line as well right so how's how's that go for you uh it's going pretty good uh you know of course within our startup in 2020 um you know our first piece was to introduce our characters, if you will, through the clothing line, mm-hmm. you know, because ultimately the, the goal is to, of course, realize a comic book series uh, that will branch out into being maybe a film or maybe some, mm-hmm. you know, video series or something like that. But, uh, yeah, collaboration is a, is, is a big piece uh, of everything. The clothing line part is just kind of like the mechanism that introduces everybody to the brand, everybody to the comic book and, and whatnot. And so 
all characters that we have and everything will be represented on the clothing brand as well as in the comic book and whatever other media that will be out there. But uh, very important for collaboration. Very nice. Very nice. You know, I honestly thought that when it came to clothing line and merchandise that it was like the opposite. So however, let's say you got your comic book going up first, the merchandise is there to kind of like prop it off of mm-hmm. something that somebody already knows. Mm-hmm. I never really thought about it as like the introducing people to bring them in to look at the comic book. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty right, So that's a good way to do it, honestly. I flip like it, it that way. It's different. Mm-hmm. Just flip it a little bit. I mean, that's innovation gets gets the biggest reward. You know what I mean? You got to kind of strike yeah. out there and just do it differently sometimes yeah. because it, sometimes the formula can become, you know, stale. Mm-hmm. To take the word that um, Amos used earlier. Sure. But it's just... You never know, man. Throw, throw a whole bunch of things at the wall <laughs> and see what sticks, man. You know what sure. I, mean? <laughs> I was thinking that for the longest. When Amos had told me about the clothing line last year in November, I was like, you know, Texas got winter in January, so like, I'm going to bother the shit out of you about getting the, get the clothing line out because, you know, people need winter clothes. And you, got, you got some dope-ass designs, so I'd be like, look, can we, can we put that on some clothes or something? Yeah. For sure, yeah. yeah. Kind of in the same vein, um, I created... Um, clothing, well not clothing, hoodies for characters I created for a comic book series and I just couldn't get that comic book off the ground the way I wanted to. I was like, man, if I have these characters, is there something like unique I can do with them? Mm-hmm. So I came up with a card game that I'm hopefully going to talk about at some point in time. Sure but uh, I feel like that's another way, kind of like you said, uh, clothing line first to reintroduce the comic book. There's so many other outlets that if you get people invested into the thing that you want to put out there first, yeah. keep that audience coming back. There's so mm-hmm. many other avenues that people will kind of follow you through. So I think mm-hmm. that's a good idea. No, for that's sure. Great. Definitely. I can't wait to hear about the sure. card game. Yeah. I mean, I'm bad at card games, but I like fucking playing card games. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Right. No, I agree. That's, and and you know, with with the clothing too, it's uh, it's advertising in itself too. Yeah. So, oh you know, yeah. 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 Because you know they're wearing it right, and then they might get a question from somebody who's into you know anime or what have you. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, hey, what is that? And then that begins another conversation. Oh yeah, man, I was at this con convention and expo or whatnot, and there was this really cool booth where they had these characters and everything. This is yeah. Good. yeah. And so you know it's. It's one of them ways to, you know, create that advertisement to where everybody becomes a walking advertisement for, for sure. you, if you will, you know. I agree. That's definitely definitely the goal we're going for, for sure, mm-hmm. for the clothing line. Definitely get a lot of people just showing out with it mm-hmm. and just having just the same idea. Just we like it. We love it. You should wear it also. For real. Just keep it just very simple. So what is your format for the clothing line? Do you just come up with ideas and then slowly roll them out? Do you have like submissions for how you want to do that? How do you have um, your company go about getting new designs for clothing? Gotcha. So with me, I'm a, I'm a big, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm a big believer of loyalty, which kind of segues to individuals like his Shogun that ever show support, love or ever helped us out on any level when it came to growing up the business, I always like to do a kickback or an opportunity. So for the clothing line, there's about, I think, 38 individuals like his Shogun here today that I'm giving them an opportunity to design certain designs that they want to see for the collaboration, which would be the phase one get their designs and we'll work the designs around the clothing compared to doing it the other way around. That way, if you have a design that's very widespread, let's do it on the hoodie and wrap it around from the front to the back. That way you get like a full visual experience with this design so it's not cheated or shorted if you shrunk it down and just tie it on top of a shirt or a hoodie. We kind of want to not limit the design but we can work around it with the fabrics. So we're doing it that way. It's our way of showing appreciation, but it's also a way of getting it to being bigger than just just us. It's everybody's clothing line at that point because they're just as invested as we are because they want to see their stuff out there shown and supported just like we do. And at that point, we just tag team and everyone gets the exposure they're looking for, either if it's through more sales or more just clicks on what Kishogun's doing or what anyone else a part of the collaboration's doing, just to see if it's like, I like his art, not filling a shirt, but I want to see what else he does. Mm -hmm. And he can always just account that for the clothing line. And that's kind of what I'm starting off for the first part of the formatting. Everything else is still kind of touch and go, but I'm liking that idea more. Because there's lots of synergy in it, and it's still focusing on what the company's about, which is collaboration, 
in unity for sure, first and foremost. So I know that uh, it's a big trigger word now, and even in 2023, but uh, back in 2020, when uh, COVID first started up, we had uh, everybody coming out of the wazoo starting companies of their own, especially with clothing lines and things like that, because everybody had a lot of free time on their hands. So I guess a big question would be, what is your company going to do that sets your stuff apart from everybody else's that helps make it successful, whether it be what platforms you sell it on or um, the materials that you use, but that separates it in a way that makes it that make people come along and say, hey, this is what I want compared to what somebody else might be offering. Gotcha. So my best answer to that is leaning towards what any of the collaborations doing naturally. So for example, Kid Shogun does a lot of streaming. So I would let that flow through naturally for him. He's already doing streaming. So if it's something along the lines of, Black Diamond Authority sponsored this episode and he's showing off some of the shirts, then it's natural for both sides. Mm -hmm. Y'all know we're doing the clothing. Y'all are already familiar with him doing the streaming, so it's not weird. Like, you can't tell that it's forced or it's scheduled. It's, it flows naturally. And then with that being said, with all the artist collaborations with that many, I believe it's 38, I believe, with that many individuals promoting the same clothing line, that organic traffic flow already kind of sets it apart because it's not 38 people randomly. It's 38 business owners promoting the same thing, which will catch a lot of attention. No matter what the algorithm is, there's no way it can't ignore that much support on one thing. And I'm trying to use that extra push to make sure everyone sees what we're offering so we're not missing anybody for that first release. Oh, very nice, very nice. And you said you've been working with Amos for a while now, so back in 2020 when <coughs> you first introduced the idea for the clothing line? Oh, he, um, I've known Amos since high school, but last year, or last November, I guess. <laughs> it's crazy that you're Last so November, yeah. uh, he kind of just threw it out there as one of the things that he wanted to do. And I kind of stuck to it because my mom at home has also been doing her own clothes and stuff. She has her own heat press and stuff, and she does crafts and stuff. So I was like, yeah, it'd be nice to get clothes to the big niggas out there like me. Because <laughs> why we can't get clothes for nothing. They're, they're, if we get them, they're expensive. So if I'm going to spend $100 on a fucking T-shirt, right. I want it to at least be a dope-ass T-shirt that right, I can right, get it from. Wear. Or something that I can wear that I'd be, hey, yo, this is a nice ass shirt. Not just this <laughs> black shirt that I'm wearing right now. This shit cost me $80, bro. But, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> No, it makes sense. Yeah, that's the that's the goal. We just want to make just good quality products and just let the supporters kind of just promote it naturally. We don't want it to feel forced. That way, the reviews are just super organic and natural. That yeah, I I believe in that organic growth, man. Because that's one of the, you know, not to throw shade on anybody. For sure, never throw shade. Not a hater. None of that. But, uh, you know, first thing when people start making moves to, you know, have a business, the first thing they do on Facebook, Instagram, is they share to their family and friends. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the first thing they do because they're like, oh, I got 250 families and friends. <laughs> Boom, they do that, right? Yep. And organically, you know, that, it, that particular strategy doesn't help because, of, of course, sure. that's your family, your friends. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they're going to be like, hell yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it. You know, and then unfortunately, sometimes your family and your friends, they don't turn into customers. They don't turn into yeah. supporters. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And That's so right. the organic growth pattern is really what you should be trying to do. So if you got to start off from zero, hell, I got, let's see, on IG, it's 160 people. But that 160 people are actually really interested yeah. in what we deliver. Right. You know what I mean? And so it's going to continue to grow from there, right? Uh, but, you know, if I had 160 family and friends, <laughs> and I started out with 160 family and friends, I could potentially stay at 160 family and friends. Yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. So I got, I got, some, I got some, uh, some growth. Everybody's got growth to do on, on Instagram and whatever else. But, uh, you know, think about different ways to, to grow your, your following uh, rather than just, you know, putting your family and friends on the spot to like some stuff that they might not really fuck with. Fair. Fair. Very fair. I have some family and friends that kind of, hey, Trump, man, what you think about this? And I'm like, oh, I mean, <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> like, you, you don't, I'm too honest. You don't, nope, a lot of people fine. don't want to hear the honesty. So I just, sure. 
Don't twist my arm on it. Just right. it's, it's, it's good. <laughs> You've never hear me talking about it again. But it's, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't buy it. Though. I'm not gonna buy it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you want you want the truth of the lie. Yeah, right. For sure. So you definitely mentioned clothing, and um, for sure, my bad. I don't know where you're stumbling over things. I had to bat out. <laughs> no, you're fine. But uh, no, you definitely mentioned the clothing line. But um, what else are you looking to offer through Black Diamond Authority? Um, I definitely kind of want to bring some family-oriented stuff together. So our classes is definitely on the queue. Um, that's where I kind of started my art experience, period, was just going to local community convention centers, whatever it may be, doing art classes. And that's when I kind of found the love for it. So I kind of want to do the same thing and kind of push it forward. So I kind of want to offer art classes before whatever you're interested in, for whatever age group. And then, of course, like everyone's finding out that's real popular is like the the adult classes, the sip and paint classes and stuff along those lines. There's lots of good following for it, good ways to meet good and interesting people. And then you still get to do what you want to do, which is the art at the end of the day. So that's definitely something I'm kind of looking out for to figure out when's a good time to start that and how I want to do it. You said sip and paint. Can I come and just sip? <laughs> I'll make sure I pull up a chair for you. Yeah. I, I don't think you can mention art in a group setting like this without mentioning things like comic books, for instance. So I know everybody. Everybody got a favorite comic book? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I am a big fan of the Uncanny X-Men series. Mm-hmm. Very classic. You got to see... Wolverine and all his trauma. You got to see Professor X actually be an OG and not what he is in the movies. And you get to see Storm actually do some cool stuff compared to just showing up and getting one shot at yeah. in the movie. So it's kind of it's kind of nice. Um, and then it's cool that they hold value even to this day. I think oh, yeah. one of my older comics I think runs for like six fifty now. Wow. So. Still gonna hold it to see if it goes higher. Um, For sure. We're gonna don't have to wanna, talk. We're, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have to bring that with the next I'm time. Telling yeah. you. For sure. Yeah. yeah. For for me, man, with the with the comics for me, of course, X-Men is legit as hell. Uh but I also got into the image comics too. Mm, with nice. uh, Spawn. Spawn, there you go. Gen, uh, I think it was Gen 13 was the one with the 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 lady team or whatnot, mm-hmm. uh, you know, doing what they do. And Image Comics had a really good run there I when agree. they came out because they were being a little bit more graphic with For everything. Sure. They were showing a little bit more blood because, mm-hmm. I mean, you yeah. can't have Spawn without the blood, blood and talking yeah. about hell and all this kind of stuff. So for me, I would say the, the Spawn series really uh, kept my attention. But also, I mean, you can't, you can't knock the X-Men. X-Men is the shit. For sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't Spawn black? Yes, he yes. is. Yes. That's what, <laughs> that's what, I remember talking about, yeah. about Soul Calibur. Yeah. We got to talking about Spawn. And it was like, so yeah, and Spawn used to be black. I said, he used to be black. Used to be. <laughs> what you mean, used to be? He is black. <laughs> he just got the suit. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 But also another one, man, that uh, my, my, my pops introduced me to was uh, one called Brother Man. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And I, you looked that one up, Brother Man. It was, I think, it was. It started out in Dallas, Texas, nice. and uh, it got it started out in the, in the 1990s. And it was uh, black owned, and it still is black owned. Nice. And that one there, man, really uh, opened oh. the door for realization that oh, you too, shit. as a black black kid, uh, can have something like this, right? Nice. And so, shout out to Brother Man Comics. Sure. Uh, for doing what y'all did in the '90s, and they they got an IG thing going on too. Uh, but Brother Man too had a, had a big part to play in just my interest in in, in comic books and everything as well. Oh, very valid, nice. Yeah. Somebody this check that out. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I hate the idea of tokenism in comics because I like the idea of original characters. But you have all the characters kind of like, um, for instance, Miles Morales, the Spider Man. Grant, I think that is actually a great representation of how you do that the correct way. Mm-hmm. For sure. But then you have other examples where people just take up the mantle and say, "Oh yeah, we put a black person as this character," and I feel like there's not enough stories that represent who we are as a people. Right. Yeah. And then Black Panther, iconic. For iconic sure. for what he did for Marvel. Iconic what he did for um, the people. Rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. Love for sure. Peace. But um. As an African American man, I can't really relate to uh, yeah. you know the African um, experience well, the yeah. same way, and mm-hmm. so I know the stories are great in representing our people, but it doesn't kind of hit the same notes as it would say now Simmons would for Spawn or Miles right. Morales would for Spider Man. Right. So, 
I like to see that diversity has come and changed some things as time has gone and we've been become more progressive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just realized okay. that your jersey is Wakanda. Oh yeah, Wakanda forever. Oh, yeah, that's that's that. That. I said that all the time. Okay. Did you, you say what your favorite comic was already? Oh yeah, my favorite comic. Uh, I read so much. Uh, my the new Fifty Two run of uh, Batman is probably my favorite. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I don't remember too much. My memory is here and there. I pretty much remember the things that I do every day. And I don't read. (laughs) (laughs) I watch people on YouTube. I don't know if I can say, but they pretty much read me the comics. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I started learning about comic book uh, Black Panther and comic book Storm... Mm -hmm. Those are the two dopest motherfuckers. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Storm yeah. is ridiculous. And they do her dirty in whatever they put mm-hmm. her in. New comics, games. Yeah. They do the old, well, from what I used to hear, used to, what I saw, old Storm was pretty much like Black Panther in terms of like the, got their powers from a god. Mm-hmm. But Storm is ridiculously strong. Oh, yeah. yeah. She yeah. should not be getting whooped in these movies and TV shows <laughs> yeah. and comics that we see. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Not at all. She's ridiculous. Yeah, for sure. Lo- love Halle Berry, but Halle Berry, you ain't stone, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's, not true. That's a hot take. That's a hot take <laughs> right there. Y'all, y'all might not, they might not feel that one, but Halle Berry, come on now. Was she no. Catwoman? She was on Catwoman. Yeah. Catwoman can, can we get that one back? <laughs> yeah, that was nice. Can we, can we get her as Catwoman? Can we just plop her in the Catwoman? And it just works. Yeah, yeah. So when you're looking to uh, sponsor writers and things like that, what are things that you're looking for um, when creating comics under the BDA brand? Um, so I'm looking for, obviously, originality, but I like to hear what their goal was originally. So I don't want, like, yeah, I have a comic idea, and then it's like, so what you do with it? Oh, I've just been sitting on it. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, have you did the art for it? Well, you know, I was going to get to it, but then, you know, I wanted to hang out with friends, and then, you know, I look up, and it's 30 years later. <laughs> like, yeah. like to yeah. me, I kind of want someone as hungry for greatness as I am. And mm-hmm. I know it's a tall order to, to look for, but self-motivation is very rare to find nowadays. Right. Um, with kind of how... Life is kind of being ran now. People can choose to work from home. They don't got to really do too much extra work nowadays. And that also kind of reflects in people's mentality. So if the individual isn't passionate about what they're bringing to me, how can I be passionate about it? Period. Exactly. It, it has to be. It has to be mutual. But obviously it's not my story. So eventually my eyes will go to another project because we got a lot of stuff to take care of. Mm -hmm. And if you're only hanging out with my motivation, we're going to keep stopping when I stop. And then nothing gets done. So motivation is a main thing. Um, And then if they're willing to be teachable. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. But if you're not willing to take experienced advice then there's nothing I can offer you. Um, I'm not going to tell you what you should change in your story, but I can tell you how you should move with your story. It's not going to always be black and white where, yeah, I can just promote it online and I'm going to get all the exposure I want. Your story might only work better in person. You never know. And it kind of takes someone who's been in the game for a while to give you those suggestions or those strategies. And if you're not willing to give it a shot or try it out, then nothing's gonna change for you. So that's my main my main things. I'm looking for self motivation, coachable, and definitely just that passion. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yep. 